In this video, I break down carbohydrates and make this super, super simple. Now, carbs tend to get a bad rap. When you look at the three main macronutrients, I'm talking about your proteins, your fats, and obviously your carbs, that tends to be a big topic of discussion with the women that I coach because most people that I work with want to lose weight or lose fat. And the first thing that they go, it's that it's low carb, low carb, low carb, low carb. And that doesn't have to be the case. Here's my philosophy. The better you understand something, the better you can then make it relevant to you. So in this video, I am breaking down carbohydrates, making it super simple so that you can take some information with you today to make better decisions with your healthy food choices. Let's jump into it. So what exactly are carbs? Now, carbs are literally food for your brain. That's what you want to actually think about it as, food for your brain. Now, the simplicity of this is that there are essentially two types of carbs. I'm talking about your simple carbs, and then there are your complex carbs. Here's a fun fact for you. They are actually called carbohydrates because at the chemical level, they contain three main things, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Now, unlike essential amino acids and fatty acids, there are no essential carbohydrates. This means we can obtain everything we need nutritionally from other food sources. So carbs are actually not necessary to maintain life. Simple carbohydrates, what are they? These are the smallest and simplest types of carbs. They contain only one or two subunits of sugar. These types of carbs are quickly absorbed in the small intestine, resulting in a spike in blood sugar and also a boost of energy. Now, sugar and syrups, candy, cereals, and sodas, that's essentially simple carbohydrates. Let's talk about complex carbs. They have more than two subunits of sugar that are actually linked together. Now, these type of carbs take longer for your body to actually break them down. The slower digestion means that there is no rapid spike in blood sugar and the energy release is prolonged. Now, we're talking about there things like whole grain bread, legumes, pasta, vegetables, and fruit. The glycemic index, or GI, as you probably have heard, it's a popular concept used to determine the effect of certain carbohydrates on blood sugar levels in the body. Now, therefore, what it actually does is that it represents the metabolic response of the body to the carbs that we eat, and then we classify them essentially into three main groups. For the lower GI foods, that means that it has a GI value less than 55, for the medium GI foods, it has a value between 56 to 69. And then for high GI foods, it's 70 or greater. Foods that have a low GI do not raise blood glucose levels as much, nor as fast as foods with a high GI. Now, let's talk a little bit about the glycemic load. All of this information, it's really good to understand if you have family members, you yourself have been recently diagnosed with prediabetes or you are indeed diabetic. Even if you're not on that side of the spectrum, it's really good to understand these things so that you don't have to be concerned about them later on. The glycemic load or GL was introduced to represent the glycemic index and carbohydrate content, which this all means at the end of the day, it also shows you your quality as well as quantity between those two measurements. Now, foods with a higher amount of protein, fat, or acidity, it will help blunt the glucose response, improving your blood sugar levels. Now in the description below, you will find a link to my free ebook called What Are Carbohydrates? which gives you the GI and GL of the most common foods that people eat. Now, while carbs are not essentially needed in your diet, they do indeed play a very important role. I'm gonna go ahead and go over the four of them that I wanna make sure that you are indeed aware of. They are the primary source of brain food. If you want your brain to actually perform well, you're gonna to need to have some carbs. 
If you've ever been on a low carb diet, you might have noticed that you were a little bit groggy, a little bit irritable. Yeah, it's because you're not giving your brain its main food source of what it enjoys to have a boost of energy. The second is that it's protein sparing and prevents ketosis. Now, if you're on to keto and you're like very, very pro keto, you're not having a lot of carbs. Now, if you wanna prevent ketosis, you need to have some carbs, keeping it simple. The third and very, very important is that when you have carbs, specifically complex carbs, it helps to actually metabolize fat, which is very crucial specifically for fat loss. The last is that it's a very good source of B vitamins as well as cholesterol metabolism. At the end of the day, the top three macronutrients, your carbs, your protein, and your fats, they kind of have this dance. They all play a crucial part with metabolizing different types of food intake. So you never want to have one essentially at zero, which is one of the reasons why when a woman comes to me first and they go, well, Millie, I, I can't have any carbs. I go and I try to understand actually why. <laughs> Talking about that, if you would like to actually have a quick discussion on understanding the best foods to work for you to have a healthy lifestyle. I'm talking about not being a slave to food anymore. In the description below, you can make sure that all you do is just click on booking a strategy session with me and I'll go ahead and I'll jump on a full 60 minute call with you so I can have some clarification and give you some clarity on creating a strategized plan to get you from hair to hear ideally where it is that you need to be. There's no precise definition of what is a minimum amount of intake needed of carbs. It's gonna be a little bit different for me, than it's gonna be for you, than for somebody else. All of our bodies are made up a little bit differently. Our body composition is different. But I will simply let you know this, the higher your muscle mass is, the more that you can handle more carbs. Do you still wanna learn how to have carbs and lose fat? Yeah? Okay, stay tuned, keep watching. Better yet, give this video a thumbs up if you're finding value in this class. Carb requirements for fat loss. Now, for a high carb diet, which essentially would equate to 200 grams plus a day, some people do very well on a higher carb diet, eating even up to 300 to 400 grams a day while still losing body fat. Now, most are not so lucky though, and those who can usually fall into the same category, which tends to be that you're young, you're lean, your metabolism is just kind of like through the roof. If that is you, then yeah, and you love carbs, and you still wanna lose fat, it's very, very possible. Now, for a moderate carb diet, that's anywhere from 100 to 200 grams a day, this is a very common daily carb range for the majority of active and healthy people looking to lose body fat. It still allows for some starch in your diet, yet it limits the amount quite significantly so that you can still actually lose fat. Low carb diet, that's less than 100 grams per day. This can best be described as a ketogenic diet. So if you're on keto, you're aware, or if you're not aware and you, you wanna know exactly what it is, it means that you're not having any starchy carbs or very little consumed daily. This is when the body is forced to actually use fat for energy versus carbs for energy. Carbs do not have to be your enemy. Go ahead and click down in the description below for a strategy call with me, or you can simply continue watching another nutrition class by clicking on this link right here to simply learn how to have a healthy relationship with food, understanding science and the food nutrition science behind these things, I've noticed makes a really big difference with the women that I coach so that they can start and you can start making better decisions on the day-to-day -day when it comes to your food. Click this video right here.